Uh, and, and I, no, it is, it is a thing of apology because that's not where my people come from. My people come, they, they came in 1824 to Wisconsin out of the Cornish tin mines. They, they were displaced workers and illegal immigrants uh, who found their way to Mineral Point, Wisconsin, to mine lead. They would crawl into a hole in the side of the mountain chip away at lead all day long, it would fall down into their faces. And I know if it, you would probably learn a little bit about lead poisoning and that, and it, that may explain some of my intellectual development. <laughs> <laughs> but my people come out of the rural valleys of Wisconsin, out of Wyoming Valley, out near south of Spring Green, out of Linden, and those townships west of Mineral Point. My mom and my dad, settled after they finished college down in Union Grove, Wisconsin, just to the east of Burlington on the way to Racine. I was born in uh, St. Mary's Hospital in Racine. At the same time, the Congresswoman Gwen Moore was born. There was an unfortunate misplacing of children. I was <laughs> but Gwen and I decided to stick with the parents we were given. <laughs> But as I was, I grew up, I grew up in this part of Wisconsin in what was traditionally the first congressional district. And uh, my congressman for a very long time was Les Aspen. Yeah! We would come out to, we would, we would go every, every two years wherever Les brought a Kennedy in. And, uh, I met Ted Kennedy at the local 72 UAW Hall the first time out in, out in Kenosha, but I used to come out here to this hall, to this hall, to meet whatever Kennedy or famous person Les Aspen had brought in, because the one thing that Les Aspen understood, he became the Secretary of Defense of the United States of America, but the one thing he understood is you take care of the United Auto Workers Union locals in your district. So that's the best part of the Democratic Party out there. I was, I was driving down out of Madison, and I was driving through Edgerton by the old tobacco barn. They're the most beautiful buildings in Wisconsin, those huge, huge tobacco drying facilities and productive profits and not used anymore. And I came down here into Kenosha, went by the Parker plant, and I, as I headed down here, you can see, what? What's that here? I, 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 I can't get it out of my head. I apologize. I'm Kenosha, you know, and it's, it's, I'm honored to be in Jamesville because it's going up the food chain. <laughs> so I'm coming down in Jamesville, but I came in, I saw the Parker plant, and and then I, as I got down here, I saw the GM plant. And I was thinking of Kenosha because, you know, Kenosha only lasted about a year longer before they closed the Chrysler plant there. And as I was coming down this way, I have to be honest with you, I was thinking about how much they have taken away from us. I mean, they, the truth of the matter is, bad trade deals, bad industrial policies, a disregard for workers and their communities has harmed this part of our country as much as any place in America. We've had so much taken away from us, and it has been a damn hard thing. It's something we should be angry about. It's something that we should not, we shouldn't say, oh, well, that's just how it goes. That's progress. That is not progress. It is not progress to take working functional factories and shut them down. It is not progress. <laughs> it's not progress. It's not progress to lay off auto workers and tell a new generation but you're not going to have the wages, the benefits, the pensions that your parents and your grandparents have. That is not progress. But that is the lie that they have told us is progress. And as I was coming down to these parts, I saw those things that we've lost. But then, as I went along, I also saw, I saw farmers out in their fields. I saw people working in their shops. I saw people getting up. I actually saw somebody out putting a recall walker sign up. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought to myself, they could take a lot away from us. They could beat on us for 
pretty hard. But the one thing they are not going to make us do is give up our state and our values and our faith that we can make a better and more just economic moment. And that that moment does not follow off in the future. That we have the ability to change the course of this state and this nation and to begin a moment in which cities like Janesville do not get beat on from above, but set the agenda for the rest of the country and begin an economic renewal that starts here but goes throughout America. I believe that day is coming. I believe there's a pivot point. I don't think history is a small arc. I think there are moments where we turn. And I happen to believe that on June 5th, when we recall Scott Walker, is the moment we don't just change Wisconsin, we begin to change the entire United States of America. <laughs>